how to use the bug types in Generation 1 Overviews or in Generation Jumble Season 2. Hello everybody, and the tournament is going to be starting very soon for Generation Jumble. I think you should join, it would be a lot of fun. Before that happens, I'm going to release 4 videos that will explain how to correctly use all of the new Pokemon added. We added 20-ish new Pokemon that we can buff the 4 weakest types in Gen 1 OU, that being Bug, Fighting, Dragon, and Poison. And starting off today, we're going to go with the bug types. Before I actually go into it, I'd like to thank Lord Ekramox for making the thumbnail for this video. As you can tell, it looks very good. He's also working on a slideshow for Generation Jump Ball Season 2. And when that happens, you better believe I'm going to make a video on it. In total, we have 5 bug types to go over. Galvantula, Armaldo, Golisopod, Vespaquin, and Yanmega. All of these, I have done videos for, obviously. However, it's going to be very different for the context of Generation Jumble. Not only because there's a lot of different Pokemon, not only because there's different things that are at the top of the format, not only because there's different moves, but also because these guys are also competing with each other. So a lot of their specific niches, they don't have for this context. But you should actually watch all of these videos individually though. But starting off, we have Galvantula. Galvantula has actually already proven to be a lot better than any of us would have expected. At first, we thought he was going to be a worse Jolteon, but in practice, he's the opposite. Now Galvantula, we, eventually, we did give him the signature move in Electro Web, which is a 55 base power electric move. That is guaranteed to make the opponent's speed drop, but that hasn't been used at all. Galvantua has mostly been used as a lead, because something you need to know about this format, Alakazam is by far the best Pokemon in the format, to the point where it looks less like the big three, and way more like Tyranitar in Gen 3 OU. Not only that, but Stormy is still a popular as ever, they still have Jinx, and I even think that Naganato, or Naganato, however you say it, while much better as a late game revenge cleaner, is pretty good as an anti-lead. All of these are Pokemon that Galvantula doesn't necessarily beat one-on-one, -on -one, but can throw them with immediate damage or just Thunder Wave against them, or not so much Naganato, but you're also not going to see it that much as a lead anyways, but everything else. Galvantula can either paralyze them or threaten with Bug Bite, since Bug Bite is another move that we're allowing for Generation Jumble. And it's pretty good on it. It doesn't get an Oko on Executor, nor does it get an Oko on any of the other Psychics. However, it doesn't really need to. Not only is starting off with just significant damage really good, but also, Galvantula has a 108 uh, speed stat. It's not that much worse than Tauros at base 110 speed. Meaning that Galvantula has a really good crit rate. Meaning Alakazam could paralyze the Galvantula. He could also go for Psychic, which is a two shot. Executor and Jinx can put the Galvantula to sleep. However, it's just super risky. Because Galvantula can threaten an Oko on them with a crit. And Starmie, I think, just has to switch out. Because you don't even need Bug Bite for Starmie, you can just go for Staff Thunderbolt. So Galvantua is pretty good when it comes to that lead. It also has the benefit of not being weak to ground. However, ever since Galvantua started being more popular, I've definitely noticed that Rhydon has been more popular as well. So, it's, at that point it's just regular electric business. Rhydon just completely stomps you out. However, you got other moves too at your disposal. Thunderbolt and Thunder Wave, obviously. And if you want to go for a Electro Web, that's fine. Because the reasoning is that if you don't know what your opponent is going to go into, you can use Electro Web for some damage, but also getting a speed drop. Which one that is permanent as a paralysis, but still might go a long way. But Galvantua also gets Slash, which I spelled wrong. Squash isn't that bad either. It's mostly going to be used for Chansey, 
I think it does like 30 or 40% the chancy. Which means that it can, it's just good consistent damage all around. And chancy you can also occasionally see as a lead. So getting decent damage on that is pretty good as well. Overall, Galvantula was a lot better than I thought he would have been. And I think he's like a relevant part in the meta. You have to keep keep in mind and uh, take account for him. Doesn't have sticky web, but this is the good thing about uh, me and the other council members being in charge, and not some of you guys, which I'm mostly talking about some people in the server, because a lot of times you just have to think outside the box, and Pokemon that would never be OU usually can be so much better. Galvantua didn't need sticky web to be good. All you needed was just a tiny move like Bug Bite, not even X Scissor. And that's great. Second off, we have Armaldo. And Armaldo is probably by far the best uh, bug type we have here. The only one that might be better is Vespaquin, which you can definitely make some arguments for. Armaldo is just a, a bulky rock type. And with the typing like Rock Bug, he's kind of made for Gen 1 OU, to be honest. His main competition is Rhydon, who gets the benefit of resisting flying and being completely immune to electric electric types can still be a threat to armaldo however in spite of that armaldo gets the huge benefit of having bug stab with bug bite and again with how popular alakazam and the other psychic types are having bug bite is huge especially since with sword stance that also gives you a significant advantage over right on so with just these two moves, you can threaten some of the most dangerous Pokemon in the format. And even without Sword Stance, Bug Bite does a lot of damage because you have a lot of attack. And this is why I wanted to go for Bug Bite and not x -Scissor. Because, you guys, um, gonna be real? x -Scissor being a guaranteed Oko on crap is just very uninteresting. It's so much better when they can do a lot of damage, but it's not always guaranteed. Also feels way more Gen 1 that way. Along with Bug Bite and Sword Stance, you have other options like Rest, you have Earthquake, which I think is pretty good, and your last move is either Rock Slide or Hyper Beam. And to be honest, I think Hyper Beam is a lot better than Rock Slide, which means as a Rock type, you're only using yourself for basically just defensive purposes, and Rock Slide definitely can be good. You can also replace Bug Bite if you want, or replace Earthquake. But Hyper Beam is just what you normally need to use on a Sword Stance user, because you can just do so much damage. And Armado is in a good spot in the meta. He's not really flashy, it's not like Sneezer or Iron Hands, but Armado has a good place. He's bulky, and that's all you really need. Now, Golisopod is a Pokemon that most people don't really think is that good. And I disagree. I think Armado has a lot of pretty good tools in the meta. For one, that defense stat is absolutely huge. And I think this uh, special stat of 60 isn't actually accurate. If you put this in like Gen 5 or whatever, he would have a special stat of 90, which is significantly better. And for Gen 1 custom games, it uses your special defense, even if it doesn't show it here. So for 140 defense and 90 special defense, the Y spot is pretty tanky. And despite that, his unique typing just gives him a lot of opportunities to switch in. Meaning that he's pretty good at just taking on whatever your team is weak to. Now for moves for Goisapod, I think Bug Bite, Surf, this is mostly just for guaranteed Ocon right on, as well as Slash are the best things you can use for it. There is Sword Stance. He technically does have that. However, I don't think Sword Stance on Golisopod is very good. For the last move, I'd rather go for Rest. Because here, you can you can be very bulky, you can take on a lot of stuff and hit back, but you can also heal so your Golisopod could be used for later. Not to mention, being as bulky as it is with a great defensive typing, it's really good for pivoting. So, I don't know if it'll be enough to be OU, but it has a spawn in the meta, and I think you should definitely try using it. 
Vespa Quinn is also a lot better than I originally gave it credit for. I thought it could be good, but I thought that having a flying bug uh, type combination would really hold it back. But to my surprise, it doesn't. Not at all, really. And this is because of Defend Order. Out of all of Vespa Quinn's signatures, this is the one that I think most people are surprised is actually really good. But all of their, her signatures are good. You got Attack Order, and you also have Heal Order. And you need all three of them together to really do something special. Because of it being a, a bug flying type with 1 on 2 attack and special defense, it's bulky when it's not being hit by a move that's, that flying types are weak to. It can wall out just a lot of the fighting types. And it also can just be used on some other physical attackers as well. But if you have something like, let's say you have a paralyzed Chansey op, it's surprisingly good to switch into, because if Vespa Quinn uses Defend Order, it becomes very hard to deal with. Like, it's actually just a... Weird as it sounds, Defend Order is kind of a win con on Vespa Quinn. Because Attack Order has a high crit rate at 90 base attack. And while at 40 speed, that doesn't sound too great, that's still a critical hit 70% of the time. Which is really big. Especially since there aren't really that many bug resistance in the format. In fact, it's kind of the contrary. Instead of having bug resistances, we have psychic types being better than ever, executor somehow being better than ever, and we also have poison types. And while they're strong against Vespa Quinn, Vespa Quinn is strong against them as well. And because of attack order being a guaranteed crit, and because of attack order being stronger than Poison Jab, you actually can out-damage them. And you have a reliable recovery. Not to mention with Defend Order, you're constantly making yourself bulkier. Vespa Quinn is the only Pokemon in the entire format that has a guaranteed KO on Executor, and with a crit, a guaranteed KO on the Psychic types. Which is very much, like, you know, oh, basically guaranteed. Which means the Psychic types are what the fear, and the Psychic types are so much better in this format than they've ever been. Like I said, Alakazam is de, de facto the best Pokemon in the format. Which, all of this in turn, means Vespa Quinn does a lot better. Doesn't do too much against the normals or even the Dragon types, since they have Fire Blast or Thunderbolt or even Blizzard. And it also doesn't do much against Electric types, they just sort of force her out. But Vespa Quinn, you need to keep in mind for her, because she can make it very hard for your for their team to do anything. Even if Vespa Quinn gets killed after just one KO or two, chances are, because of the defend orders and with the critical attack orders, it would have done a lot of damage to your opponent, to the point where it'll be easier for you to just whittle down their team. For Vespa Quinn's final move, most people just opt to go for Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray can give you a lot of the times the chance to get a free turn in, which can help Vespa Quinn either get a defend order up or get a heal order. But some people have also used Poison Sting, which is as funny as it sounds. I honest to God don't know how good it is, but Poison Sting, because a lot of time, like I said, you're using Vespa Quinn as a as like your win con, and if that's the case. Using Poison Stink allows you to get some chip damage in. For the most part, not that good, because there's other statuses that exist. But if you really are using your Vespa Quinn to the very end, I've seen it happen at least once or twice, where someone only had one Pokemon left, and once that happens, Vespa Quinn just got a Poison Sting in, and then it just couldn't do anything. And that's another thing. Vespa Quinn is a very dangerous Pokemon to face, if it's the last, if you have only one more Pokemon on your team. When that happens, you're kind of screwed. So maybe Vespa Quinn is better than Armaldo, and maybe better than Galvantula as well. It's a big race between these three on which one is the best bug type, and whichever one's the best bug type is something that I think you should try to vote for. And Glycopod is... He has a good place in the meta, but he won't be seen a lot, but I still think he's pretty good. This is not what I can say about Yanmega. 
The Omega is worth testing, but he suffers a lot. For one, he has no good stab, nor does he have any good way to use his special attack. The only special move he has access to is Psychic, which is okay, but with how many Psychic types are in the format, and just in general with how strong everything is, it doesn't hit hard at all. So his other main niche is just having Hypnosis, which is already a pretty inconsistent move. Not only is Gengar not really using Hypnosis a lot, but Jinx is better now than ever has been before, since she now has Dragon types who she can feast upon with Wizard, as well as Ice moves in general being more popular, meaning that Jinx's Ice immunity is just more valuable. Yanmega is just terrible defensively, but doesn't have any of Vespa Quinn's benefits. Because along with Hypnosis being inconsistent at best, 95 base speed isn't really a lot, especially now in this format, because now we have Min Shao, we have Salamence, we have Walking Wig, Naganadal, Sneasler, Algazam's better, Starmie's better, etc. 95 speed just becomes very underwhelming. Not for Jinx, because Jinx has great defensive and offensive utility, but when you have a bad offensive type and defensive type, you are just not one of the speeds that you so badly wish you are like, honestly, you wish you would switch your special and speed around, in all honesty. Other moves it has is Slash, it has Hyper Beam, and since it needs this move to evolve in regular games, Ancient Power is a signature move of it, but with uh, 60, or 76 attack, it won't really hit that hard, but I will argue that it's maybe underutilized, since it is like the only real coverage it has that makes it stand out. So maybe Ancient Power for the other bugs is theoretically something you can do. You have Slash, which you might as well use since it's a guaranteed crit. But to be honest, I think uh, this right here might be the best Yon Mega set, which is weird because it doesn't even use Hypnosis. But Hypnosis is so bad on it anyways that you honestly might be better off going with as much coverage as possible. You could maybe make this work. I know Myrox is very keen on trying to make Monobug work. And I also know that I think it was weird thing that you was a monobug team in one so y'all mega like you could you might be able to make it work but it'll be very team reliant as well as also being very reliant on what moves you're actually using on this thing but that's about it that's about a brief summary of every single bug type that we have in generation jumbles season two we also have scyther and pincer both of them get Bug Bite, so they have their own utilities. A and, actually, I guess I can go for them real quickly, but there's not much to say. Scyther is a decently fast, and it has Sword Stance. With Bug Bite and Sword Stance, it obviously does a lot of damage. You can also give it Slash for consistent damage, and I guess Hyper Beam. Or if you really want to, you could probably get it Wing Attack for Bug Coverage. However, it's like so weak to electric and ice. So even though it's like decent, I think Vespa Quinn's much better. Definitely better than Yon Mega, but defensively you're suffering a lot. Pinsir's probably a little bit better. At least one person is using it as a lead, which is very interesting. But it's kind of the same thing as Galvantua, but to a more extreme state, since with 125 attack with Bug Bite. You might be able to throw in Okos and stuff. Otherwise, it's just regular Pinsir, but a lot better since it doesn't get completely walled out by Gengar. So something like Bug Bite, Bind, Sword Sands, Hyper Beam seems pretty decent. But that's about it. Not much to say about those. But what do you think about the bug types and Generation Jump will Season 2? Will you be participating in the tournament happening April 2nd? All you need to do is sign up for the a tournament down below with the link as well as also a drawing discord server also keep in mind with this tournament it 
like the way it works is we will just ping you on who you need to uh, face in your match and you'll have like three days to pick a time with them and just battle them so you don't have to like do everything on just april 2nd everything you won't be busy it'll be a lot of fun and i love to have you thank you all for watching be sure to join the discord server so that you can join the tournament this is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you.